The deal. Mom and Mr. Tushman were talking when we got back to the office. Mrs. Garcia was the first to see us come back, and she started smiling her shiny smile as we walked in. So, August, what did you think? Did you like what you saw? She asked. Yeah, I nodded, looking over at Mom. Jack, Julian, and Charlotte were standing by the door, not sure where to go or if they were still needed. I wondered what else they had been told about me before they'd met me. Did you see the baby chick? Mom asked me. As I shook my head, Julian said, are you talking about the baby chicks in science? Those get donated to a farm at the end of every school year. Oh, said mom, disappointed. But they hatch new ones every year in science, Jillian added, so August will be able to see them again in the spring. Oh, good, said mom, eyeing me. They were so cute, August. I wish you wouldn't talk to me like I was a baby in front of other people. So, August, said Mr. Tushman, did these guys show you around enough or do you want to see more? I realized I forgot to ask them to show you to the gym. We did it anyways, Mr. Tushman, said Julian. Excellent, said Mr. Tushman. And I told him about the school play and some of the electives, said Charlotte. Oh no, she said suddenly. We forgot to show him the art room. That's okay, said Mr. Tushman. But we can show it to him now, Charlotte offered. Do we have to pick up Via soon, I said to mom. That was our signal for tell my telling mom if I wanted to leave. Oh, you're right, said Mom, getting up. I could tell she was pretending to check the time on her watch. I'm sorry, everybody. I lost track of the time. We have to go pick up my daughter at her new school. She's taking an unofficial tour today. This part wasn't a lie, that Via was checking out her new school today. The part that was a lie was that we were picking her up at the school, which we weren't. She was coming home with Dad later. Where does she go to school? asked Mr. Tushman, getting up. She's starting Faulkner High School this fall. Wow, that's not an easy school to get into. Good for her. Thank you, said Mom, nodding. It's a bit of a schlep, though. The A train down to 86, then the Crosstown bus all the way to the east side. Takes an hour that way, but it's just a 15-minute drive. It'll be worth it. I know a couple of kids who got into Faulkner and love it, said Mr. Tushman. We should really go, Mom, I said, tugging at her book, pocketbook. We said goodbye kind of quickly after that. I think Mr. Tushman was a little surprised that we were leaving so suddenly, and then I wondered if he would blame Jack and Charlotte, even though it was really only Julian who made me feel kind of bad. Everyone was real nice, I made sure to tell Mr. Tushman before we left. I look forward to having you as a student, said Mr. Tushman, patting my back. Bye, I said to Jack, Charlotte, and Julian, but I didn't look at them, or look up at all, until I left the building. Home. As soon as we walked at least half a block from school, Mom said, So, how did it go? Did you like it? Not yet, Mom. When we get home, I said. The moment we got inside the house, I ran to my room and threw myself onto the bed. I could tell Mom didn't know what was up, and I guess I really didn't either. I felt very sad and a tiny bit happy at the exact same time. Kind of like that laughing, crying feeling all over again. My dog, Daisy, followed me into the room, jumped on the bed, and started licking me all over my face. Who's a good girly? I said in Dad's voice. Who's a good girly? Is everything okay, sweetness? Mom said. She wanted to sit down beside me, but Daisy was hogging the bed. Excuse me, Daisy, she sat down, nudging Daisy over. Were those kids not nice to you, Augie? Oh, no, I said, only half lying. They were okay. But were they nice? Mr. Tushman went on his way to tell me what sweet kids they are. Uh-huh, I nodded, but I kept looking at Daisy, kissing her on the nose and rubbing her ear until her back leg did that little flea-scratching shake. That boy Julian seemed especially nice, Mom said. Oh, no, he was the least nice. I like Jack, though. He was nice. I thought his name was Jack Will, but it's just Jack. Wait, maybe I'm getting them confused. Which was one... Which one was the one with the dark hair that was brushed forward? Julian. And he wasn't nice? No, not nice. Oh, she thought about this for a second. Okay, so is he that kind of kid who's only one way in front of grown-ups and another way in front of kids? Yeah, I guess. Ah, hate those, she said, nodding. He was like, so August, what's the deal with your face? I said, looking at Daisy the whole time. Were you in a fire or something? Mom didn't say anything. When I looked up at her, I could tell she was completely shocked. 
He didn't say it in a mean way, I said quickly. He was just asking. Mom nodded. But I really like Jack, I said. He was like, shut up, Julian. And Charlotte was like, you're so rude, Julian. Mom nodded again. She pressed her fingers on her forehead like she was pushing against a headache. I'm so sorry, Augie, she said quietly. Her cheeks were bright red. No, it's okay, Mom, really. You don't have to go to school if you don't want to, sweetie. I want to, I said. Augie, really, Mom, I want to. And I wasn't lying. First day jitters. Okay, so I admit that the first day of school, I was super nervous that the butterflies in my stomach were more like pigeons flying around my insides. Mom and dad were probably a little nervous too, but they acted all excited for me, taking pictures of me and Via before we left the house, since it was Via's first day of school too. Up until a few days ago, we still weren't sure I would be going to school at all. After my tour of the school, mom and dad had reversed sides on whether I should go or not. Mom was now the one saying I shouldn't go, and dad was saying I should. Dad had told me he was really proud of how I handled myself with Julian, and that I was turning into quite the strong man. And I heard him tell mom that he now thought she had been right all along. But mom, I could tell, wasn't so sure anymore. When dad told her that he and Via wanted to talk to walk with me to school today too, since it was on the way to the subway station, mom seemed relieved that we would all be going together. And I guess I was too. Even though Beecher Prep was just a few blocks away from our house, I've only been on that block a couple of times before. In general, I try to avoid blocks where there are a lot of kids roaming around. On our block, everyone knows me and I know everybody. I know every brick and every tree trunk and every crack in the sidewalk. I know Mrs. Grimaldi, the lady who's always sitting by her window, and the old guy who walks up and down the street whistling like a bird. I know the deli on the corner where mom gets our bagels and the waitresses at the coffee shop who all call me honey and give me lollipops when they see me. I love my neighborhood of North River Heights, which is why it was so strange to be walking down to, oops, sorry. I love my neighborhood of North River Heights, which is why it was so strange to be walking down these blocks feeling like it was all new to me suddenly. Ams Forest Avenue, a street I've been down a million times looking totally different for some reason. Full of people I've never saw before, waiting for buses, pushing strollers. We crossed Am Force and turned up Heights Place. Via walked next to me like she usually does, and Mom and Dad were behind us. As soon as we turned the corner, we saw all the kids in front of the school, hundreds of them talking to each other in little groups, laughing or standing with their parents who were talking with other parents. I kept my head way down. Everyone's just as nervous as you are, said Via in my ear. Just remember that this is everyone's first day of school, Okay. Mr. Tushman was greeting students and parents in front of the school entrance. I have to admit, so far nothing bad had happened. I didn't catch anyone staring or even noticing me. Only once did I look up to see some girls on my way and whispering with their hands cupped over their mouths, but they looked away when they saw me notice them. We reached the front entrance. Okay, so this is it, big boy, said Dad, putting his hand on top of my shoulders. Have a great first day. I love you, said Via giving me a big kiss and a hug. You too, I said. I love you, Augie, said Dad, hugging me. Bye. Then Mom hugged me, but I could tell she was about to cry, which would have totally embarrassed me. So I gave her a fast, hard hug, turned, and disappeared into the school. Locks. I went straight to room 301 on the third floor. Now I was glad I had gone on that little tour because I knew exactly where to go and I didn't have to look up once. I noticed that some kids were definitely staring at me now. I did my thing of pretending not to notice. I went inside the classroom and the teacher was writing on the chalkboard while all the kids st started sitting at different desks. The desks were in a half circle facing the chalkboard. So I chose a desk in the middle toward the back, which I thought would make it harder for anyone to stare at me. I still kept my head way down, just looking up enough from under my bangs to see everyone's feet. As the desk started to fill up, I did notice that no one sat down next to me. A couple of times, someone was about to sit next to me, then changed his or her mind at the last minute and sat somewhere else. Hey, August. 
It was Charlotte, giving me her little wave as she sat down at a desk in the front of the class. Why anyone would ever choose to sit way up in front of the class, I don't know. Hey, I said, nodding hello. Then I noticed Julian was sitting a few seats away from her, talking to some other kids. I know he saw me, but he didn't say hello. Suddenly, someone was sitting down next to me. It was Jack Will. Jack. What's up? He said, nodding at me. Hey, Jack, I answered, waving my hand, which I immediately wished I hadn't done because it felt kind of uncool. Okay, kids. Okay, everybody. Settle down, said the teacher, now facing us. She had written her name, Miss Potosa, on the chalkboard. Everyone find a seat, please. Come in, she said to the couple of kids who had just walked into the room. There's a seat over there and right there. She hadn't noticed me yet. Now, the first thing I want everyone to do is stop talking and... She noticed me. Put your backpacks down and quiet down. She had only hesitated for a millionth of a second, but I could tell that moment she saw me. Like I said, I'm used to it now. I'm going to take attendance and I'll do the seating chart, she continued, sitting on the edge of her desk. Next to her were three neat rows of accordion folders. When I call your name, come up and I'll hand you a folder with your name on it. It contained your class schedule and your combination lock, which you should not try to open until I tell you. Your locker number is written on the class schedule. Be forewarned that some lockers are not right outside the class, but down the hall. And before anyone even thinks of asking, no, you cannot change switch lockers and you can't switch locks. Then if there's time at the end of the period, we're all going to get to know each other a little better. Okay? Okay. She picked up the clipboard on her desk and started reading the names out loud. Okay, so Julian Albans, she said looking up. Julian raised his hand and said, here, at the same time. Hi, Julian, she said, making a note on her sheeting chart. She picked up the first folder and held it out toward him. Come pick it up, she said, kind of of no nonsense. He got up and took it from her. Simon Chin. She handed a folder to each of the kids as she read off the names. As she went down the list, I noticed that the seat next to me was the only one still empty, even though there were two kids sitting at one desk just a few seats away. When she called the name of one of them, a big kid named Henry Joplin, who already looked like a teenager, she said, Henry, there's an empty desk right over there. Why don't you go take that seat, okay? She handed him his folder and pointed to the desk next to mine. Although I didn't look at him directly, I could tell Henry did not want to move next to me, just by the way he dragged his backpack on the floor as he came over, like he was moving in slow motion. Then he plopped into his backpack up really high on the right side of the desk, so it was kind of like a wall between his desk and mine. Maya Markowitz, Miss Potosa was saying. Here, said a girl, about four desks down from me. Miles Norrie. Here, said the kid that had been sitting with Henry Joplin. As he walked back to his desk, I saw him shoot Henry a poor you look. August Pullman, said Miss Potosa. Here, I said quietly, raising my hand a bit. Hi, August. She said, smiling at me very nicely when I went to get up my folder. I kind of felt everyone's eyes burning into my back for a few seconds. I stood in front of the class and everybody looked down. And when I walked back to my desk, I resisted spinning the combination when I sat down, even though everyone else was doing it because she had specifically told us not to. I was already pretty good at opening locks anyway, because I used them all the time on my bike. Henry kept trying to open his lock, but couldn't do it. He was getting frustrated and kind of cursing under his breath. Miss Potosa called out the next few names. The last name was Jack Will. After she handed Jack his folder, she said, okay, so everybody write your combinations down somewhere safe that you won't forget, okay? But if you do forget, which happens at least 3.2 times per semester, Mrs. Garcia has a list of all the combination numbers. Now go ahead, take your locks out, of the folders and spend a couple of minutes practicing how to open them. Though I know some of you went ahead and did that anyway. She was looking at Henry when she said that. And in the meanwhile, I'll tell you guys a little something about myself. And then you guys can tell me a little something about yourselves and we'll um, get to know each other. Sound good? Good. She smiled at everyone, though I felt like she was smiling at me the most. It wasn't a shiny smile like Mrs. Garcia's smile, but a normal smile, like she meant it. She looked very different from what I thought my teachers were going to look like. 
I guess I thought she looked like Miss Fowl from Jimmy Neutron, an old lady with a big bun on top of her head. But in fact, she looked exactly like Mon Mothma from Star Wars Episode 6. Haircut kind of like a boy's and a big white shirt, like kind of like a tunic. She turned around and stared, started writing on the chalkboard. Henry still couldn't get his lock open, and he was getting more and more frustrated every time someone else popped one more open. He got really annoyed when I was able to open mine the first try. The funny thing is, if he hadn't put that backpack between us, I most definitely would have offered to help him.